A good designer is someone who realizes he doesn't know everything about design. If that's the truth, then I must be a freaking amazing designer. Over the last couple weeks, I put out three different videos where I talked about all the different things I would like to see within each Affinity program. That's designer, photo, and publisher. And a few times, people in the community said, uh, Dave, those things already exist. This is why I really appreciate the community because if I didn't have these people coming in and say, uh, Dave, uh, hate to correct you, but, you know, if I didn't have that, I wouldn't get any further along and I'd just be kind of yelling at the wall, AKA Affinities Forums. And this will be the, oh my gosh, I didn't even know that existed, just like it was that way for me. Let's go. What's going on everybody? My name is Dave Connery. I'm an artist and designer based in Southern California and I don't know all the things. I make all the things, I don't know all the things. I can openly admit that I need help. <laughs> and not just in these programs. Full disclosure, I don't have anything for Affinity Designer today. I had my list of Affinity Designer things and pretty much all the things that I had on that Affinity Designer list are things that people said, yeah, but that, those are the things we need. But if you wanna find out the things that I learned about Affinity Photo and Affinity Publisher, well, stick around. Let's start with Publisher. The very first thing that I introduced on that Affinity Publisher video was that I wish I could manipulate the things that are on the page when it comes to a master page. It's like, if I click on this page here, uh, you can see it's master page is up here. Here's the regular page, which is what I'm on. I can't click on it. In Adobe InDesign, I would be able to option click or option shift click or option click click or click option shift click command click click. And that would allow me the ability to take this one object and move it or delete it or remove it from that particular page without altering the master page. When I look at my layers over here, you can see that I have all of these elements that are available to me. And if I wanted to, I could delete that. So I was on the impression that the only way that I could ever do this is if I created another page or do something that I could alter those ones. And of course, somebody came into the comments and said, yeah, that's actually a thing. It's not as simple as it is in InDesign, but it's pretty close. If I hold down Command, Shift, and then D, it brings up this little editing master aid detached. And now I can go ahead and take that thing out of there if I wanted to, move this one over here, move that one over there, move this one down like that, and then hit finish. And of course on my page it's altered, but if I go back to my master, it is not. Command shift D, that's how you get the master page things on a single page to move and manipulate or change or whatever. Now the second thing isn't exclusive to publisher. This also works in photo and in designer. I was talking about how I wish that you could wrap text easily around an object. And I, you know, it's funny because I was thinking to myself as I said that in the last video that, that you could do this and that I, I just was like maybe oblivious to it. If you weren't messing Messing around trying to do things you wouldn't find it it's not like you can go into a menu or anything and see like oh it's just automatically available but let's say I wanted to wrap text around this shape right here I have it selected I go over to my artistic text tool I click that and as soon as I get close to it look at that this is where the text goes but this still doesn't answer the text problem of making inline text meaning text that is vertical in height as opposed to you know, horizontal. So now this is more of a hack as it's written here than it is an actual thing, but if you do this, this will help you make inline text. So it's important to understand you need to use a text frame, not just the artistic text tool. This has to be within a frame to for this to work. If I drag the frame and I bring it down and then I bring it together and I'm, I'm holding the command button as I do this so that it comes in from both sides. So you can see that I have now got inline text. A couple of things to note. You may or may not want to make this adjustment, but I have it, the text centered. You can also do obviously right justification, but then it's like, it's a little bit wonky to me. So I believe that it works better when it's centered. And then of course you can do whatever you want to it. But let's just say for a second that I didn't like the letting of the particular letters. Like I don't like the space between the A and the H versus what the K and the C looks like. Maybe I wanted the A to go up a little bit higher, but not all the rest. The problem is if I just select the A and I just start doing some key commands to adjust my letting, you can see that it's adjusting the letting for the whole word. And that's because letting affects lines. And this is technically still a line. It just happens to be that the text is, you know, pushing to the next line. If I wanted to be able to adjust every single letter independently, what I would need to do is do a hard return for every one of these. And now I can do the letting here, make that adjustment and make this one a little bit more aggressive if I wanted. Again, this is a hack, but this is one way to get this happening. It's not exactly the most ideal way to do it, but it does work and uh, use it to your own intent if you want or don't. And hopefully 
Affinity will work in uh, in inline text tool at some point in the future. Let's jump over to Affinity Photo. I only have two things on this list. And the first one is my complaint about not being able to export adjustments. Like I can export different things. I can, these styles I can export. My assets I can export if I wanted to, but I can't export adjustments or so I thought. Small caveat, what I'm about to show you doesn't work on every single adjustment but it works on a good portion of them. Let's say I wanted to add a gradient map to this particular photo. This is one I've already created and you know, it looks pretty good, but let's say I wanted to make it a little bit more grungy. Let's do some crazy stuff with this. Let's mess with the exposure. Maybe uh, blend that down a little bit. Let's go like, let's see, it's like, that's kind of nice. And then let's add some threshold because I like threshold. Of course, it's all black and white, but if I go and I change this to, let's say, I don't know, let's say hard light or something crazy like overlay. That's kind of cool. And then reduce my opacity on that down just a tad. So I've got this like really gritty, kind of grungy look. I don't know if I'd actually keep this or not, but let's just use it for this example. I go back to my layers. You can see I have my gradient map, my exposure, and then my threshold. I have no way to save all these as a thing that I could just drop into an assets thing. I could create an action, I could create a macro, but then I'd have to make all the adjustments and it may not necessarily work for each one. But if I go up here to file and I go export LUT, you can see exactly how it would apply to this test image and you can put a load a different preview image in there if you want it i'm going to bring my quality up i'm going to take it all the way to 64. now this is going to create a pretty large file but we're just going to take it up there i'm going to let's call it test lut and i want to keep it as a cube that's kind of a universal thing and i believe i'm don't hold me to this but i believe that this lut can also be used within Photoshop and other photo editing apps. So I'm gonna export it. I'm gonna just take it to my desktop. So let's just go ahead and delete these for now because I don't need them anymore. But I want to bring in that LUT so that I can reapply it. I go back to my adjustments, scroll down to LUT, bring this up here so you can see it. I'm gonna load my LUT, find it right there. Of course it reapplied in full percentage. That's probably the biggest issue. It's reapplying full percentage of all the adjustments that I'd already had there. Now I can probably readjust and make some adjustments here, overlay, and I could do my opacity again, but there it is. That's how I do it. That's how you take some of your adjustments and export them so that you can use them later or you can maybe give to other people for whatever purposes. <clears throat> I'm working on something. And finally, let's talk about brushes, specifically pattern brushes, specifically that I said that they didn't exist, but they actually do. And it also goes a little bit to the point I made in that photo video where I talked about it needing more, needing to understand brush control more. And one of the things I complained about was that I wanted to be able to create a halftone pattern brush because what I wanted to be able to do is take my halftone brush like I have here and I wanted to be able to lay it down and create like dots. See how these dots are like this? I wanted to be able to be, go back over this section and have it hit the exact same spot just with maybe a little bit more opacity with each pass. So that way I could create that kind of comic book shaded effect. This brush does not give me that it just gives me full percentage and even if i hit it again it's gonna it's gonna paint in a new place it doesn't hit the same spots that's why i wanted a pattern of brush lo and behold it actually exists i've got this brush right here i'm gonna bring it up in size so you can see it and this isn't a really great brush i still need to refine this one a little bit and that like disregard that line that's one of the things i need to refine but as you can see as i lay down the paint it's not doubling up extra spot again here's this brush just fully loaded. And then there's this brush. It's just painting the same spot over and over again. And if I go back over that a little bit darker and more and more and more and more so that you can see, I'm actually creating a shade. And if I bring my opacity down while I do this, then I can really build up slowly. So how did I do this? It's simple. If I go into my brush, you can see I started with a round brush. I made some adjustments here, but these are not really important for, for the conversation. What's important is this part right here. My base texture, you can't see it, but it's basically that pattern and it's big. Clear up some room here. So as you can see, I'm doing this and it's because of that. And I can even, let's say it set a different texture. I've got a couple other ones here. You see it's a little different, but no matter how many times I paint over it, you can see that the dots are lined up where they're supposed to be and I'm just adding to their saturation. Even if I change a different color, go with red and come back in and paint red on top of that, there's some opacity to it because of my settings over here, but when I paint this, it's painting red on top of that black. 
So it's just adding on top of it. And that's the effect I was looking for. All of these things need refinement and practice for me to be able to use them in, a, you know, in a way that I feel qualified, but at least I know now that there are these things available to me that I can use that I didn't think that were there before. And hopefully the ones that are more hack-like will be implemented into the programs in the future. Um, but even if they're not, I work with what I got. As always, if I find anything that's kind of cool, I'm gonna be bringing it here so you guys can check it out for yourself. That's pretty much all I got for this one. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you learned something and you go and make something cool with one of these things. That whole brush thing is, you know, that's really the biggest one for me. And I think that um, you're gonna be seeing a lot of that coming soon. On that note, I'm gonna get out. Thanks everyone, I appreciate you. You have plenty of opportunity. Oh, and a huge, huge thanks to my Patreon supporters. I really appreciate those people that uh, really like, they made a lot of things work for me. And if you don't know anything about my Patreon, there's a link in the description. You can get in on some really cool goodies. Just saying. All right, I'm going to get out. Remember, be good today. Be even better tomorrow. See ya.